City of Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be part of this midweek virtual teaching experience. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the blessing of another day. We thank you, God, for allowing us to see the sunrise and sunset of this day, this day that we've never seen before, a day we never see again. We thank you, God, for the provisions and the protection and the prosperity that we encounter on this day. Thank you for your presence that kept us throughout this day. And as we come this evening, God, we ask that you speak to us and speak through us. Open up your word to us now. Pray that you open up our hearts to be receptive of your word. Open up our spirits so that your word will grow in us and we'll be stronger believers in our walk with you. Touch us now, God, in a special way. Touch those that's watching this right now, God. We pray that you'll give them the blessings they stand in need of. We speak life now. We speak healing now. We speak deliverance now. We speak um, breakthroughs now, God, in Jesus' name. God, we pray that you'll bless our church family, that you'll bless the Greater Macedonia Baptist Church, that you'll bless us collectively, and you'll bless each member individually, God, with a blessing that you know they stand in need of. We bless those that will come across this live or come across this video, and we pray, God, that you'll speak to their hearts, that you'll prick them where they are, that you'll challenge them, charge them, and even change them so you can get praise out of their lives. We pray for God for those who are hurting in this season, God. We pray that you'll give them the strength they need to endure the season that they're going through. We ask you, God, that you'll give joy now in this time of sorrow, give peace in the time of storm. God, we pray now that you'll just bless them and keep them, prop them up on every weak and leaning side. Let them know to continue to look to you, the author and the finisher of their faith. And so now, God, as we come this evening, we pray that you'll touch us in a special way. Speak to us and speak through us. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible declares that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. We truly give God praise, honor, and glory for being the head of our lives. And we thank God for each and every one of you for being a part of this midweek teaching experience. As we continue our teaching series from the Temptations of Christ by Satan, Matthew chapter number 4, um, we look at verses 8 through 11 on this evening, Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 11, as we deal with how Christ, we talk about how Christ deals with the devil, part 3. How Christ deals with the devil, part 3. Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. Matthew 4, verses 8 through 11. King James Version of the Bible records it like this. Again, the devil taking them up into a high exceeding high mountain and showed them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came 
and ministered unto him. As we look at how Christ deals with the devil in this third and last and final teaching, we come to this final temptation of Satan here in the fourth chapter. We look at how Christ deals with the devil. He has been tempted with instant food, instant fame, and now he's tempted with instant fortune, instant food, instant fame, and now this temptation deals with instant fortune. He's been tempted with appetite, acceptance, but now this temptation is um, tempting his ambition. Tempted to take a shortcut to do the spectacular, and tempted to do the spectacular, now he's tempted with success. My brothers and my sisters, we too are tempted with food, fame, and fortune. We too are tempted with appetite, acceptance, and ambition. We too are tempted with shortcuts, spectacular, and success. And we are to conquer those temptations. We must follow the example of Jesus Christ. If we're going to follow his example, then the word must go from a Bible in our hands to a Bible in our hearts. I'll say that again. If we're going to successfully succeed the, the temptations of the devil, it has to go from a Bible in our hands to a Bible in our hearts. As we see in this fourth chapter of Matthew, Satan is persistent. He, he will keep coming and coming. He kept coming and coming after Christ, and Christ has used the holy word of God. Satan is still coming. And there are some witnesses that can testify that the, the enemy is persistent. That, that's why we have to be persistent in the word of God. So when the enemy comes at us with his attacks, we can withstand him with God's word. My brothers and sisters, there is power in the word of God. Let me say it like this. There was power in the word. There is power in the word. And there will be power in the word. That There was power in the word. There is power in the word. And there will be power in the word. Someone this evening needs to know that the word of God is true. And the word of God still works. If we're going to survive the attacks of the evil one, we must know that the word of God, and we must not just know the word of God, but we must use the word of God. Because the word does work. Christ shows us that the one thing that will put the enemy away is the word of God. Check this out. Each temptation got greater. Each temptation progressed to more. From food to fame to fortune. The enemy will continue after us each time bringing a bigger trick out of his bag. This is why Christ told his disciples in Matthew 26, 41, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We can never get comfortable when it when it what when it seems as it comes to the enemy, the wicked one, the devil is never gonna leave us alone. He, he's just gone for a season, but he'll come back with something bigger and better than he did before. So when we look at this text in verse eight and nine, look at how Christ deals with the devil in this text. First thing we see in verse 8 and 9, we see the seduction of success. The seduction of success. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we have to be careful because success can be seducive. We can get caught up so much in success that we miss the mark of where God wants us to be. It says again, the devil takes them up into a seeing high mountain and shows them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto them, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. This temptation transitions Jesus from the pinnacle of the temple to a high mountain. On this mountain, Satan shows the Savior all the kingdoms and their glory. He parades the glory of Assyria and of Babylon and of Persia. He, he shows Christ the splendor of Greece, the majesty of the Roman Empire. Can't, can't you hear Satan saying to the Savior, I gave the world to Alexander. I have given it to Caesar. You, you, you are much better than them. But think how the world longs for a king like you. you. You are a king. All you need is a throne. Think of it. A carpenter of Nazareth 
crown, emperor of the world. All it can, all of it can be yours, not just Rome, but beyond the Euphrates, beyond the Nile, beyond the pillars of Hercules. All I ask is one brief bend of your knee. All you have to do is render me one act of homage. Look at you. You have no food, you have no fame, and you have no fortune. I offer you everything this world contains. Can't you hear Satan talking to him? The kingdom, the power, and the glory with no cross. Satan was tempting Christ to compromise his deity. He was tempting Christ to compromise his ministry and his mission. He was tempting to secure the success of the world without the cross, without paying the price tempted to do it another way other than God's way. Not only tempted to compromise his ministry and mission, but also his life and his loyalty. He was tempted to switch loyalties. He could gain the world and sovereign leadership of the world. If he would just do one thing, and that's worship the devil. Matthew 6, 26 says, For what is man profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? See, we must know that the kingdoms of this world are temporary, but our souls are eternal. What we see in this life is temporal, but the soul is eternal. But also know that Satan cannot give us what God has not promised us. Satan cannot give us what God has has not promised us. We cannot allow Satan to seduce us with success because the Bible says that promotion does not come from the east nor from the west. Promotion comes from God. So when we know that God is the one that promotes, Satan cannot, cannot seduce us with success. When we know it's God who elevates, it's God who promotes, then Satan cannot seduce us with success because we understand our success lies in God's will. Also, when we face temptation, we, we cannot get discouraged when we're facing the onslaught of the enemy, nor can we get overconfident and feel we are above Temptation, that there's a seduction of success in verse 8 and 9. But then in verse number 10, not only there's a seduction of success, when we look at Christ deals with the devil in this third part in this text, we see the steadfastness of the scriptures. That Jesus Christ stands firm in the word of God. And that's, that's the word, brothers and sisters. If we're going to succeed and overcome the obstacles of of the enemy, we got to be steadfast, unmovable, always about in the work of the Lord. We got to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Look what verse 10 says. It says, then says, um, then says Jesus, then get thee hence, Satan, for it's written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. The holy nature of Christ does not find sin attractive, but finds it repulsive. Uh, it, it, it's the picture. It's a picture of of of, of a, a pig and a sheep. When a pig sees a mud spot in the ground, a pig dives in the mud spot. A pig wallows in the mud spot. A pig plays in the mud. The pig enjoys the mud. But when a sheep falls in the mud. The sheep does everything it can to get out the mud and get the mud off them. Because as a believer, as a believer of Jesus Christ, we should find sin repulsive, not attractive. For the third time, Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy. This time he quotes Deuteronomy 6.13. It says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. God is looking for us to be totally sold out to him. Why? 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 Because when we are totally sold out to him, we then won't, the, won't, won't be concerned about position and power, but about his passion and his purpose. Our ambition cannot be selfish ambition. We are all vulnerable to fall for the sin of ambition. When we succumb to our own ambition, we then 
exalt rival, rivalry to God's throne. Satan offered the word world to Jesus in exchange for worship. If you worship me, Satan says, I give you the world. We'll say somebody sold their soul to the devil. That, that this is an issue of power, and everyone likes to have power, but but the Lord says power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely, Lord Aitken said that power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. There's nothing wrong with us wanting to improve our position, but we need to be beware of when we set our goals and how we uh, go about achieving them. Have you ever known someone who acted out way I acted one way for years, and then suddenly, when they get some power, their whole personality changes. They get a certain label, a certain position, and their whole personality changes. See, when we understand why we were created, then we know that our worship and our service is for God and to God alone. You and I were, were created to worship God and God alone. Our worship is to God our worship to God must be larger than our position in church. I, I don't I don't worship God because I'm a preacher or a pastor. I worship God because of who he is. We our worship to God has to be based on who God is. That, 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 that then when I think about the position he has blessed me with, my worship even more is even more sincere because I have, have not done anything to deserve the position he's given me. Same goes for anyone. God chose to use us in spite of us. I say that again. God chose to use us in spite of us. That, that is what should prompt your worship, is that God put you on his program when you weren't qualified to be on the program. Then, then we have to realize he chose to use us, but he does not need us. I say that all the time. He does not need any. God can pick anybody who he wants. He's sovereign. He can do what he wants to do when he wants to with who he desires to do it with. And when we have to, have, when we have that in our mind, our service and our worship will be sincere and genuine, not with motives or malice. J Jesus says, Satan, you're not going to get me because I know the scripture. And when you know the scriptures, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Boys and girls, you won't get lofty-minded or get big-headed when you get a position or a title because you know the scripture that he does not, that we do not choose him. He chooses us. We don't elevate ourselves. He elevates us. When we know the scripture, we won't get caught up in the world that says, oh, if you just do this, if you if you do this, nobody will see you. If you just do this, ain't nobody going to know but me and you, and you'll have great success. But you've got to know, brothers and sisters, God knows and God sees everything. God, God is omniscient. He knows all. So even though no other anthropod or no other human may see it, you got to know that God sees it. So when Satan came, Satan, Satan met Jesus first. Well, after he got through fasting, Satan said, hey, turn this bread. Turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, no man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He takes it to the pinnacle of the temple, and if you just throw, cast yourself down, He'll give you, and Jesus said, no, you are not tempted, Lord, thy God. Because Jesus kept using the word. And now, when Satan said, if you just worship me, just bow down one time. Nobody will know it's just being you up here on this mountain. Ain't nobody going to know it. Nobody's going to see it. It's just up on us up here. Jesus said, I'll oh, get these hints, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. We got to know for it is written. We got to know the word of God. We got to know the scriptures. We got to be able to quote, for it is written, and then know what was written. So we see the seduction of success, verse 8 through 9. We see the steadfastness of the scripture, in verse number 10. But then last and finally, as we close out this teaching series, in verse number 11, we'll see the support for his service. That when you stand with the word, God will give you the support you need to endure the process. We live in a time and a day where folk don't want to endure the process. They, they want to take shortcuts to get to where they want to get to. They want to cut, cut across the field and do other things that 
that don't line up with God's word nor his will to, in, to get to where they think God wants them to be. But when you follow the word of God, when you follow the plan and the process of God, God will send you support for his service when you endure the process. Look at verse number 11. It says, then the, then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Satan had tempted Jesus. Yes, he had tempted Eve. And with the three great sources of sin, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But the word was able to withstand the wicked. Christ resisted the temptation the only way he could, by doing exactly what the word of God said. He simply obeyed God. The devil is a conquered enemy. Colossians 2.15 says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphantly, over them in it. God knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. 2 Peter 2.9 said, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. When temptation is resisted, the devil flees and the believer is relieved for a while. James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And look at the text. And now angels came and ministered unto him. In the second temptation, Satan had suggested to Jesus that he take advantage of those holy angels. And now, in God's good time and purpose, they came to help him. Because Satan told him in the second temptation, if you just jump off this, this temple, God will give you charge over his angels. And they'll catch you. They'll get you. No harm will come to you. But when Jesus was able to come back with it is written and stand on the word. God sends his angels of support in the right time in the process. I know sometimes it don't make any sense. We don't understand it because we want God to move when we want God to move. But God is saying it's a process. I'm taking you through something to bring you to something. I'll say that again. I'm taking you through something to bring you to something. You ought to tweet that. You ought to type that. You ought to encourage yourself with it. I'm taking you through something to bring you to something. So whatever God is taking you through right now is so that he can bring you to something. And I know the enemy is trying to tell you to take a shortcut. The enemy wants you to do the spectacular. The enemy wants to seduce you with success, but you got to stand firm on the word of God and know that the word of God will not fail you. If God spoke it to you, God will bring it to pass. He may not bring it to pass in your time but God's timing is always on time. So we got to pray to God for God to give us the patience to endure the process so that when his timing is right, we can step forth in the providence of God and in the principles of God and in the covering of God and stand and be witnesses that God's word will come to pass when we trust God's word, but also when we wait on God's word to come to pass. Oh, saints, you say, you can't hurry God, no matter how long it takes. He's a God that you can't hurry. He'll be there. Don't you worry. He may not come when you want him to come, but he's always on time. God is always on time. If you're watching this evening and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Bible says in Romans chapter number 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you can be saved. All you have to do is self believe and confess. If you're already saved but you're not united with a local church or the Spirit has spoken to you and said you need to be a part of this church, the Greater Macedonia Baptist Church, Bible teaching, Bible believing church. We want you to be a part of our church family. I would love to be your pastor. I would love to be the under shepherd and the watchman of your soul. And lastly, if you're a backslider, Jeremiah 3 says he's in love with the backslider. So much so that he's married to the backslider. 
you know, Revelation chapter 20 says, he stands at the door of your heart knocking. If you open up the door, he'll come in, he'll sup with you, he'll come in and fellowship with you. If you come in and and just let him in, then he will be there and be the Lord and Savior of your life. You made any of those three decisions, right? That you reach out to us through our DM or contact our church office. So we can help you grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and offerings, there's a number of ways you can do it. You can mail it here to the church at 1880 Edgewood Avenue West, Jacksonville, Florida, 32208. That's 1880 Edgewood Avenue West, Jacksonville, Florida, 32208. Or if you're in a local Jacksonville area, you can drop it off here at the church in the secure mail drop. 1880 Edgewood Avenue West, Jacksonville, Florida, 32208. If you want to go online, you can use your debit or credit card by going to www.gmbcjx.com and selecting the Give tab. And you can give through a secured website using your debit or credit card. If you got a smart device, you can download the Givelify app. You can download the Givelify app and search for Greater Macedonia Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. And you'll see a picture of our church and our logo. And you can Give using your debit or credit card through that secured app. You can create recurring giving through the Giveify app where it will automatically deduct your credit or debit card whenever you set for the occurrence to happen. I appreciate you so much, my brothers and my sisters, for your sacrifices you have made in your giving, for the fulfillment of the missions here at the church, for the blessings of God upon those who are the least, the last, the lost, and the left out. Let's not forget we're still collecting items to um, send to those that are hurting from Hurricane Ian in the Southwest Florida area. And, and we want to be a blessing to those people. You can drop items off here at the church from 10 to 1, Monday through Thursday, so we can get those things down to Southwest Florida. Um, let's not forget this Sunday. This Sunday is Pink Out Sunday. I'm asking everybody to wear pink. Everybody wear pink as we recognize those who have survived breast cancer and those who got the ultimate victory over breast cancer. On this Sunday, we will recognize those with Pink Out Sunday. Pink Out Sunday, everybody with pink. If you're watching virtually on Sunday, we'll actually put on some pink. Take a picture, tag the church on your picture so we can share it on our social media pages so our, our, our followers can see that even those that's in the virtual sanctuary was pinked out also. But let's not forget Pink Out Sunday on this Sunday. And then, of course, on the fifth Sunday, on the fifth Sunday, we have a jeans, jerseys, and joys, and then our trunk or treat after service on the fifth Sunday. We're looking to have a great time celebrating the Lord, celebrating the Lord in this season of increase in the life of our church. Bless you and keep you is our prayer. The benediction, now to him who's able to keep us from falling, able to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. So only wise God, our Savior, be the majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth now and forevermore. We all say, Amen. God bless you and God keep you in our prayer. God's got a blessing. Come on, you want to tell somebody, come on. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Come on, you want to tell somebody, come on. God's got a blessing.